Good afternoon, uh, everybody. I would like to be with you in Washington, but COVID-19 decided me not to come there. To begin with, I would like to thank Dr. Lynn Goldman, Dean of the American Institute School of Public Health, and uh, Colin of uh, Marie Foundation for or inviting me and organizing this important symposium in my honor. Last but not least, I am very happy to see in this audience my partners, Nancy Sermon of NIH and Dorothy, Senior Global Health Security Agenda Advisor at USAID. My talk today is lessons from the discovery of uh, Ebola. This slide uh, presents the different epidemics not high in Africa in 2020, according to Africa CDC. Most of them were notified from uh, countries of Congo and Nile basins. The epidemics of uh, Ebola virus are of greatest concern to global health. Ebola virus disease epidemics are caused by Ebola virus, a member of Filoviridae family, which contains six serotypes are pathogenic for humans. Ebola virus disease is a zoonosis. Frugivorous bats are the suspected reservoir of the virus, and non-human primates and other animals are contaminated from direct or indirect contact with infected bats. Large epizootics can then develop in primates or other animals like uh, forest antelopes. Humans are infected through and infected sick or dead animals found in the forest or by direct contact with infected bats. Secondly, human-to-human -human transmission can occur through direct contact with the blood, organs, or other bodily fluids of infected people. The risk is higher when taking care of patients or when handling the bodies of deceased patients. The first outbreak of Ebola virus disease was documented in Yambuku. Yambuku is a small Catholic mission with an hospital run by Belgian sisters. In September 1975, the mission and its surrounding villages were hit by a deadly mysterious disease. The Ministry of Health was alerted on 21 September 1976. Typhoid fever and yellow fever were suspected being the cause of this epidemic with high case fatality rate. As of 22 September, 30 people were infected by the mysterious disease, including 22 deaths. Four patients fled the hospital. The disease did not respond to antimalaria drugs and antibiotics. The national response was organized on 23 September as an investigation team, virologists, myself, and an epidemiologist, Dr. Mombo, took a military plane from Kinshasa to uh, Bumba. We traveled by jeep from uh, Bumba to Yambuku. The hospital was empty except for a dying child in his mother. The next day, the news of the arrival of the doctors from Kinshasa prompted some patients to return to hospital. Most of them carried on bicycles. A brief physical examination of some patients showed no particularities apart from extreme fatigue, fever, and headache, like in case of typhoid fever. With bare hands, I took blood sample from five febrile patients for blood culture and six samples for wither test. When the needle is removed, the puncture site continues to bleed. My hands were stained with patient blood. Fortunately, I washed my hands 
immediately. Otherwise, I wouldn't be with you today. Three nurses died from the mysterious disease the night of our arrival. Without gloves, we collected fragments of their livers for pathology examination. During the midday meal, one of the Belgian sisters who cared for uh, the patients told me that she had a fever. So the situation was critical and we decided to shorten our mission and go back to Kinshasa with the sick sister and my test tubes without special precautions. From Njili Airport, the sick sister, accompanied by uh, another nun, took a taxi for Galema Hospital in Kinshasa. The next day, 25 September, the samples were processed at the microbiology laboratory and at the pathology laboratory at the University of Kinshasa. My lab was with wooden benches covered with formica. The water raining was irregular and we use and reuse pipette and syringes and mouth pipetting was the rule. We had no glove, no PPA. So we process five blood cultures. All were negative after de 10 days incubation at 37 degrees. And also the widow test conducted on samples taken from uh, the wife of the index case and from uh, uh, Sukato, who was the lab technician at the hospital, gave the results that was not conclusive because with our test is not a standard test for the diagnosis of uh, typhoid fever. The golden, the golden test is a blood culture that was negative. And also the pathology of the first specimen gave an histological appearance compatible with the yellow fever. And the two other samples gave histological appearance compatible with uh, active uh, liver congestion. So given all these uh, results, we can exclude bacteriological etiology of of the fever and also the virological etiology with yellow fever of these cases, this mysterious uh, disease. And uh, sample were collected uh, from the wife of the index case and also from uh, a nurse called Sukato, who was the laboratory technician. But uh, the results of without test were not significant. All the blood culture tested negative for Salmonella typhi after 10 days of incubation. At Ngalema Hospital, the sick sister unsuccessfully treated with the antimalaria drugs and antibiotics, so she died. A Congolese nurse, Mayinga, was contaminated, and also the accompanying Belgian sister was contaminated. So the blood from the sixth sister we evacuated to uh, from Yamboko was sent to ITM, Institute of Tropical Medicine in Antwerp, where uh, Peter Piot was working and the novel virus was isolated, but the confirmation of Ebola was made by uh, CDC, by uh, Carl Johnson at CDC. So that this uh, new virus, they give the name of uh, Ebola, uh, according to the uh, small river in the forest in the next Yambuku. And the second uh, outbreak was in Kipwit in 1995, 19 years after the outbreak of Yambuku. So on April 27, 1995, the Bishop of Kipwit alerted me to a deadly epidemic of bloody diarrhea and fever. Several people had died, even among the nursing staff and Italian nuns. If you say Italian nuns, so European nuns, it means that the situation is critical. It was the first urban epidemic with the risk of spreading to the closest capitals in the world, Kinshasa and Brazzaville. I have been designated as the coordinator of Ebola response activities. Under the WHO ages, we had established control strategies to respond to Ebola virus epidemics currently used in Africa. We treated eight Ebola patients with the blood of Ebola survivor, just one died, and we demonstrated the effectiveness of sensitization and PPA to protect the uh, healthcare workers. Uh, in this graph, in red, are the number of uh, healthcare workers who were contaminated in the hospital. But when the protective equipment arrived around the 12th of May, the number of uh, healthcare workers contaminated decreased 
trees and only one was contaminated, even uh, he was uh, protected. So uh, we decided to conduct the investigation to determine the etiology of this outbreak. Bacteriological investigation. We searched for uh, Shigella and we examined 97 stool samples. Uh, only four were positive for Shigella and nine uh, blood culture to look for Salmonella typhi and all was negative. We cannot say that this outbreak was of bacterial origin. We must look for other etiology. We conducted epidemiological investigation of person, uh, time, and place. In terms of person, there was adult and there was a, a lab technician, nurses, doctors, and others who were infected. The first case seemed to be on 10 April 1995, post surgical operation and uh, intensive care and where cases were seen in Kikwit, Kikwit General Hospital, Musang Hospital, and Bongayasa Hospital. But to see the, the epidemiological links between the cases, the index case of this nosocomial infection seemed to be a lab technician from Kikwit 2 Hospital who was transferred to Hospital General de Kikwit on 9 April for uh, an operation. After the operation, these people in yellow uh, were infected and most of them died. And one of the, the nurse, it is uh, Floralba, an Italian sister, contaminated, infected her other nuns in the covent. Uh, in total, six sisters died of this uh, uh, disease. In total, 300, 317 cases and 250 deaths and uh, case fatality rate of 78. We conclude that this uh, bloody diarrhea is not due to a bacterial infection, but by contact with blood, with uh, body fluid. So the contact with uh, body fluid may be due to a viral disease, for example, viral hemorrhagic fever. It is to confirm from this hypothesis, we took uh, 14 blood samples uh, from the sick and survivors of this outbreak. It was on May 4th, and we sent it to Kinshasa, and Dr. Lae from the Embassy of Belgium sent this. We conducted virological investigation to confirm this hypothesis. For that, 14 blood samples were taken from the sick and survivors on May 4th. In 1995. And we sent the samples to ITM via the embassy of uh, Belgium, and the sample were received by Dr. Lae. And uh, ITM in, in, in Antwerp sent the samples to CDC Atlanta on 6 May. CDC Atlanta give sent us the result on 10 May, confirming the presence of uh, Ebola in Kikwit. And so um, retrospectively, we confirmed that um, the heartbreak started in January and the virus was, the outbreak was again amplified by the Kikwit General Hospital with uh, many, many cases uh, among healthcare workers. So that is uh, the starting point of this outbreak that was also amplified by the burial ceremony in the community. Uh, during this uh, outbreak, we treat eight patients with the blood of survivor. Only one died and we thought that antibody can protect can protect against Ebola. The first patient, a lady, who was treated with the blood transfusion from the convalescent. But this, uh, our study had some uh, limitations because it was only an observational study without a control arm. And also, uh, this uh, experience was conducted at the tail of the outbreak. Maybe the virus has lost its virulence. And also, the sample size was very small, only eight patients. And uh, later on, Dr. Jarling at NIH demonstrated that uh, Hyperimmune serum in macaque was not protective. And finally, the blood from Ebola survivors uh, during the, the outbreak in West Africa was not conclusive. So this um, 
experience has never been tried in the subsequent Ebola outbreak. We continue to believe that there is something that can protect with the blood of survivor. It is why in 2004, I received the visit of Dr. Barney Graham at the NRB. Uh, Barney was uh, working at NIH Vaccine Research Center. I discussed with him and he was interested on the observation of Kikwit. We project to send Ebola Kikwit survivors to VRC to explore the state of their humoral immunity. In 2005, I went to uh, met and Dr. Nancy Sullivan, Chief of Biodefense. Uh, in 2006, NIH and NRB signed a research collaboration agreement, and Dr. Mulango, my, my collaborator, and Chani uh, went to VRC visiting scientists. I chose uh, Cyprien Mobiala, who was working at NRB, one of the convalescent, one of the the survivor uh, who gave his blood in Kikwit, he went to uh, VRC in 2006. The starting point was the treatment of Ebola patient with the blood of survivors. Uh, we had contact with Barney, and Barney advised Nancy Servant to work with uh, my team. And Mobiala, the choice of Mobiala was uh, uh, crucial because he developed a very severe disease of uh, Ebola. And uh, after that, and uh, it is why I decided to send him to NIH. At that time also, uh, Dr. Mulango was there and continued to work on the blood of, uh, of Mobiala in collaboration with uh, the team of, uh, of Nancy. They isolated the monoclonal antibody we call uh, MAP 1014, and uh, this MAP 14 uh, study on the animals model and also uh, at, at NIH, the Vaccine Research uh, Center, uh, started with a phase one uh, study. Finally, during the outbreak of North Kivu, in 2018, Eastern of the DRC was eat for the first time by an outbreak of uh, Ebola. The outbreak was declared on August the 1st. This region is ravaged. The provinces of North Kivu, South Kivu, and Ituri are in trouble because of armed groups that kill people there. And also the population is always moving. And the population was also reluctant to follow the public health measures given by the group in charge of the control of the outbreak. So containment was very challenging, but we took this opportunity to use technological innovation and to conduct clinical trials for vaccines, therapeutics, and diagnosis. So on the 1st of August, North Kivu and a tour outbreak was declared and sample taken in Mangina and sent to Ainar Bay for confirmation. It was confirmed that it was uh, Ebola, Zaire, Ebola virus. And uh, on August the 6th, the virus was sequenced, showing that uh, it is a Zaire Ebola virus. So supporting usage of vaccine, the new vaccine introduced by Merck, and the use of uh, monoclonal antibodies like ZMAP and MAP114. And on August 7th, uh, the Ethical Committee approved the use of uh, these uh, monoclonal antibodies and vaccine. A uh, clinical team of INR Bay arrived at the site of the outbreak. In August 8th, we started vaccinating population uh, with the, the new vaccine and using the ring vaccination strategy. And uh, on August 10th, we treat two patients, two Ebola patients under Murray protocol with uh, our molecule MAP114. And it was successful. And from uh, 11 to 13 uh, August, we treated eight more patients with our molecule. All survived. The picture is show you the first two cure cases of Ebola after re receiving MAP114. And also we developed diagnosis with PCR and gene expert using the existing equipment in the use by the TB program. And also we use rapid tests to uh, 
control all deaths occurring in the community. And we were also able to perform sequencing uh, at the site of epidemic. Most of the patients were uh, uh, treated uh, according to the uh, randomized control trial of uh, Ebola we call the PARM. So it was successful and it was demonstrated that patients treated with MAP114 were protected. More or less 34% of uh, patients treated with uh, MAP114 were cured. In the control group treated with ZMAP, the percentage of cure is 40 less than uh, 50%. So um, our molecule was submitted to FDA for approval and it was later approval. To give you uh, some uh, um, uh, success story at the NRB, uh, from 1998 to 2003, I was the only PhD at the NRB. Today, I am surrounded of a team of PhD collaborators. Most of these PhD were trained abroad, but they all decided to come back and work at the NRB because we have developed research infrastructure at the NRB. New labs, 45 staff members, and the expertise is in virology, molecular biology, bacteriology, immunology, clinical biology, and next generation sequencing antimicrobial resistant, and so on. The major accomplishments are managing seven laboratories for COVID-19 response across four provinces, North Kivu, South Kivu, Ituri, and Otoele. Managing 10th DRC post-Ebola outbreak period, 12th uh, epidemic, and 13th epidemic, always in the eastern part of the country. And setting up next generation sequencing platform for COVID, Ebola, polio, and bacteria. And setting up a functional cold chain for reagents, samples, Ebola therapeutics, and vaccine. Uh, this is um, the lab in containers, in three containers. The first container is a P2 laboratory. The second in the middle is a cool room. And uh, the third one is uh, the P, P3 laboratory. The RNRB has developed a provincial public health laboratory in North Kivu, in Goma, and this uh, lab was funded by the Fondation Merieux and USAID. So the, this uh, Rodolphe Merieux laboratory is very important for us because in this lab we can conduct biological surveillance of important diseases, and also we can conduct research in collaboration with our partners. And uh, also with uh, Laboratoire Rodolphe Merrier in uh, Goma, we have a very active team there, and we think this regional lab will be very useful for surveillance and research in this part of the country. And uh, we have also developed a bio repository, and also we created uh, a data center at the NRB. And uh, we are developing a clinical research center with the collaboration of uh, NIH. is a public health laboratory. NRB created a reference laboratory for malaria, influenza, polio, uh, monkeypox, and so on. Also, is conducting research in different. Uh, uh, pathogens uh, like uh, cholera, malaria, influenza, polio, uh, and, and so on. And now with uh, its uh, PSL3 laboratory, researchers and, um, and technicians can work safely on uh, suspected Ebola hemorrhagic uh, fever samples and also on suspected uh, multi-resistant tuberculosis. This is our P3 and P2 new labs built by uh, Japanese cooperation JICA. For more than four decades since its discovery in 1976, Ebola virus disease as no treatment or vaccine. Today, thanks to international collaboration, Ebola virus is preventable and curable with the Merck RVSV above GPE vaccine and monoclonal antibodies, including a Banga monoclonal antibodies 114. Thanks to commitment and tenacity of Congolese scientists, the close collaboration with NIH, 
and the contribution of Congolese patients and survivors under the ages of the WHO. Thank you.